Have you ever heard the name Earth Defense Force? If you have, you're probably one of two people. You're either A, someone who's a fan of old Toho movies, B, someone who's a fan of the Earth Defense Force video games, or C, you're a fan of both. Earth Defense Force was originally coined in the 1957 movie The Mysterians from Toho, the same people that made the Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla movies. D3 Publisher has been making the Earth Defense Force games, which is a series that is supposed to be just like those old B-movies with alien invasions and giant monsters. I was a big fan of the Vita's first Earth Defense Force game, which was EDF 2017 Portable. Today, we have a sequel to that game, which is actually a remake of a PS2 and PSP game that never made it west. Here is my official review of Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space. EDF 2 takes place in the year 2019, two years after the repelled alien invasion from EDF 2017. There is peace in the world, and humanity has finally rebuilt the Earth Defense Force, incorporating not only the infantry class that was available in EDF 2017, but two new classes, the Pale Wing class, which is a jetpack friendly class, and the Air Raider class, which originally debuted in Earth Defense Force 2025 on the PS3. In this piece, it is suddenly thrown into chaos when aliens show up once again requiring the EDF to defend the planet. EDF 2 is a third-person shooting game just like the other EDF games. Throughout the game you will be going through various missions that pit you against hordes of enemies in a very large sandbox environment. There aren't any extra elements, it's just a straight-up third-person shooter. Before we dive into the game, let's compare the game to its previous version and its predecessor. Compared to 2017 Portable, it has a new class, the Air Raider, which was introduced in the PS3 title, EDF 2025. It also has more missions. EDF 2017 had 60 missions to go through, and the original version of EDF 2 had 71 missions to go through. This remake has 78 missions. With almost 80 missions at its disposal, it's quite a bit longer than the previous game, as well as its original version. As you progress through the game, you will be playing through missions that, as I said before, pit you in sandbox environments with huge hordes of enemies. You can go through any of these missions with any of the three classes. You have Infantry, which is the default class from 2017, that handles main firearms and can go into various vehicles like tanks. Then you have the Pale Wing class. The Pale Wing specializes in energy weapons and has an energy-based jetpack on their back. They have high mobility, but they have an energy gauge that you have to watch that goes down whenever you fire a weapon or use the jetpack. Finally, we have the Air Raider. The Air Raider specializes in covert artillery, and they also specialize in vehicles. They have the most vehicles at their disposal, from cycles to tanks to even helicopters. As you go through the mission, you will be fighting enemies, and as you fight enemies, they will drop items when they are defeated. They'll drop health items that let you replenish your health, they'll drop weapon packs that you can use to get weapons at the end of the mission, and they'll drop armor upgrades that will increase your maximum health once you're done with the mission. Also, if things get a little hard for you or you just don't want to play by yourself, there are online and ad hoc multiplayer features for both co-op and versus. The last two things I want to talk about are difficulty and length. As far as difficulty is concerned, EDF 2 is a lot harder than EDF 2017. By the time you get to some of the final boss fights, you will likely be throwing your Vita across the room, even if you're playing on the easier normal difficulties. This is not an easy game to play, and some of the later boss fights have a pretty big difficulty curve. As far as length goes, you can imagine that it's longer than EDF 2017 because it has more missions. Across the 78 missions, I would say that if you go on easier and normal, you would be spending at least 12 to 15 hours to get to the final boss. This is a good few hours more than EDF 2017 was. Now let's talk about the presentation. Visually, the game doesn't look like the best thing the Vita has to offer, but it doesn't look bad. It's a bit of a step up from EDF 2017 Portable. The overall gameplay engine looks about the same, but there is a lot more detail in the characters, the environments, and especially the monsters. In EDF 2017, some of the monsters were just kind of painted one color. Now, if you look close, you can see bumps and scales all over them. The only complaint I have with how the game looks is the lighting. Some of the stages have you 
going through and fighting enemies in the middle of the night. And in some of those stages, the lighting makes there have a bit of a glow around characters and especially items. On items, it looks very blurry. The only difference is items are blurry, but enemies aren't blurry. It makes it look a little bit odd. The last complaint I have with performance is the frame rate. The frame rate stays steady for pretty much the entire game, but in a few areas, when you get swarmed by dozens upon dozens of enemies all at once, the frames tend to drop a little bit. In the big open stages, you don't see this happen very often. It's more or less in the underground tunnel stages that this happens. So if you jump down to the bottom of a tunnel and there's, say, 50, 60 enemies right down there in the space with you, the frame rate has a pretty good chance of dropping a lot. It didn't drop to become unplayable but once for me, but it was enough to be able to mention it in this review. Earth Defense Force 2 is just as action-packed, cheesy, and fun as 2017 Portable was. The game does slow down a bit when the game is flooded with enemies, and the night stages make things a little blurry. But if you look past this, you'll find a game that is far superior to its predecessor in content, features, and especially difficulty. Reviews to go rates Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space an 8 out of 10. If you'd like to comment on this further, feel free to below or head to my site at www.reviews2go.com.